Can you hear it? I had it. Can you hear it? I hear it. Can you hear that theme music? Here it comes. It's coming. What's up, everybody? <laughs> I did a little oh, icebreaker. You're going to keep me busy. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> you're keep me we busy. had to do a little icebreaker. <laughs> so, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 2018 Escape the Cape Triathlon and Open Water Swim Classic this year with Dr. Mitch Green from Green Psych Sports Psychology. I'm Stephen Delmonte, your race director for Delmo Sports. Thanks for coming in, Dr. Mitch. Steve, six years in a row, buddy. Six years in a row. I'm I happy appreciate to be here. It. Happy to be here again to push people. I mean, help people off the boat. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. About that. Very different, no right? Usually walking them back from the ledge this time. This time. Walking them over the edge. Encouraging them that jumping is a good thing. It's a good thing on this weekend. Excellent. So the purpose of uh, of our meeting tonight uh, is really to kind of go through what it takes as an athlete, what it takes as a promoter, as we get closer and closer. Please understand, for, for us here at Delmo Sports, the day the event ends, we are full blast into the next year. So it's a, it's a year's worth of anticipation, right? We've been doing the work. It's a year's worth of anticipation. I got chills. Yeah, man. And, and it's coming up, and it never, it never gets old. And, and what I'm trying to explain is, is that some of you, over 300 of you, this is your first triathlon. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Awesome. And even though, uh, even though I produce many events, there's this thing I got to deal with deep inside. Mm -hmm. And so what I would like to start out with for, for the newer triathletes, as well as those triathletes that – you know what? You're experienced triathletes, but you've got this thing about jumping off of the boat. Yeah. You know, 12 feet, it's 100% total commitment. There is no wading into the water at Escape the Cape. It is cross over the mat, go. And once you go, you're, there's no, like, bringing you back up into the boat. You're going. So <laughs> not to freak you out or anything. No, don't freak them out. But that's what this is about. That's why he signed up. Right? Exactly. You could do any triathlon. You signed up for this one because, in many of you, because of the jump, because it's unusual, because it's out of your comfort zone, because it's something special. And on the one hand, it's going to make you totally uncomfortable, some of you in squeamish. On the other hand, it's what absolutely makes Escape the Cape special. Yeah, and that's why you're here. Agreed. Agreed. So, so Doc, I, I know I'm starting to feel it now. You know, I'm 10 days out. I got that yeah, uh, like it's uh, a little feeling in my <laughs> stomach, but it's okay. It's what makes me feel alive. That's why I do it. You know, when I'm uncomfortable, I know I'm getting better. Mm -hmm. I'm growing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not complacent. And I think the same goes for you as triathletes. So let's fast forward. Yeah. Monday. Mm -hmm. Race week. Yeah. There it is. It's looking at us in the face. Yeah. What can you, what can you tell the, either the athlete that is not a big fan of heights, not a big fan of open water. Yeah. Uh, and what can you tell them to get their minds right? race week and and relay that to me as a promoter because <laughs> you i got my whole thing going on you are the whole other story <laughs> if you only saw everybody what i see going on in this <laughs> office you know he's going to need a lot more time than this facebook live but maybe I'll, some of this will help you well first really most important steve is that you have the proper perspective about what this is all about in the first place so i want to congratulate everybody out there who's tuning in or everyone who's going to show up that weekend congratulate you on the commitment to the hard work those early mornings, you know, those lunchtime swims, those evening workouts, the time you said no to that extra beer or wine because you knew you had a big day or you had the extra beer and wine and you did the you did the workout <laughs> anyway. You know, all that goes into it. We appreciate that and know what's been going on. You already have your busy lives. You have real jobs. This isn't your job. But I, that's partly why I want to bring it up because you have to have some perspective that you will, by the time you get here, you have to be hopefully looking forward to a celebration, a celebration of the work you've done with a bunch of other crazies who've also lived the life that you've been living over the last however many months, mm -hmm. getting up early, staying up late, trying to deal with your kids, trying to deal with your work life. Yep. So most importantly, what you can do over this next week plus is make sure that you have this proper mindset that this is something that's more of a celebration than something you should be feeling more of, of a threat or something that you're more worried about. Even though the race has its challenges, and again, that's why you're signed up for it, because you decided you wanted to live life with a little bit more gusto, 
you were tired of the same old, same old, yep. and that this is something personal, personal for you, you know? And that's the other piece I want to make sure you don't get caught up in this week is comparing yourselves too much to everybody else. You know, if I had to pick one of the key reasons that people get at particularly anxious or particularly nervous when it comes to race day is because they're sort of caught up in, in this expectations that they have to like produce a certain kind of result, yeah. you know? And, um, and while it's okay to want a result and it's okay to want to do sure. well, you have to be able to kind of get excited about, again, the effort that you've been putting in, the, the, just the fact that you're competing, just the fact that you're out there doing this. Make sure that you keep an eye on that prize because where the worst mistakes I see made is it's all about the result. And if you get tight, if you start thinking about the result, the, the whole experience starts to feel heavy, yeah. heavier than it needs to be. And the trick is that's going to slow you down, actually. For those yeah. of you who want the result, it's going to wind up slowing you down. So that's a couple of things right off the bat. Absolutely. So what we do here at Delmo Sports, because uh, just think of it this way. If you, you're going into anything that's grand, you must have a plan. For sure. You have to have a plan. Here at Delmo Sports, our operations guide is 97 pages long. 97 pages long. But that ops guide. For real? That, that's for real. Okay. That's for I have an example right here. Hold oh, on. God. We have, you know, here, here you go. 97 pages. <laughs> so here's the thing. Yeah. The reason it's, it's long is we break every minute detail down for race week. There are no questions in our minds about how is this going to get done? Yeah. It states it in our plan. Yeah. Now, this is very, this will be a little bit different for you, but what I would like for you to do is to create your own ops guide. You know, you're your own race director for you. And it starts as easy as simply take your weekend and put it on one sheet of paper. Okay. When you're going to leave your house, when you're going to arrive, okay. what you're going to do. The next thing I would like for our athletes to do to at least get their minds in a particular place where, hey, I know what's going on here. There's no reason for me to be nervous. You know, if the, the racing is the one thing is what I think is a, is a cool idea for them, Doc, and correct me if I'm wrong, is um, print out the athlete guide. <laughs> Actually print out the athlete guide. I, I know we offer the athlete guide online. You can go and look at the PDF. Yeah. However, yeah. I get my best results. I print it out. Yeah. I highlight. I circle. Yeah. And just because what I see happen, and this happens to me, I think I'm going to remember everything. But because I'm nervous, I'm anxious. I go, wait, what time am I show up? What time does transition open? You'll be lying in bed in the hotel. You could just pull it out. You don't have to get on your phone again. Open your laptop. I'll give you a perfect example. Yeah. Huge failure for me, Dumbo Sports. Mud Hen Half Marathon, 8K. I didn't print out my schedule, even oh. though I made the schedule <laughs> for months and months and months. And I started the 8K. I started it 15 minutes early. I produced more events than I'd like to remember. And because I didn't have my guide printed out, yeah. even though, you know, it's my script. Yeah. Stick to your script. Yeah. Number one, that'll never happen again. I'm sorry for all those athletes. Yeah. Okay? But number two, it's very important that you have your checklist ready to go for the weekend. Yeah, and the psychologist will say when there's if you increase structure, it decreases anxiety. So as much structure as you have, which is literally having the pages in front of you laid out, maybe taking that, writing your own little notes on your side, as Steve says, with what your schedule is, it's going to help you with all the anxiety because there's there are a lot of logistics to being a triathlete. The less you have to spend extra time worrying or digging, the better. Yeah, creating those checklists, and we all know for all of our, all of our list people out there, there is no better feeling than checking the box that something was done. Yeah. And it could be something as easy as waking up the same time every day yeah. to having a particular meal. Like, give yourself a few gimmies in there that you know you're going to do. Yeah. That way you could check those boxes off and feel better about the week coming up and about the weekend. Absolutely. So, you know, we'll say they've made a plan. Okay. They've read the athlete guide. They've remembered about the celebration part of this. Absolutely. Okay. You know what's going to come. You know it's about the journey, mm -hmm. not necessarily re the result. And I'd like to address the swimmers right now in the group. The people that are just doing, just doing the swim right. on Saturday morning. Okay? Just doing the swim. This is a three-mile swim. 
in the Delaware Bay, as well as a one-mile swim. Okay. History will point out we have very few, I don't know, non-swimmers in this event. It's a legit swim, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is a make good for the Escape to Lewis. The last three years, the yeah. Escape to Lewis was canceled three years in a row, and it was basically like the God saying, Stephen, don't come to Delaware anymore, you know? So. Uh, yeah, the bad, bad luck. <laughs> bad hey, luck. Yeah. Is what it is. Everything happens for a reason. Right. You know, everything happens for us, not to us, right? That's right. All right. So, swimmers. Yes. You're arriving. Go ahead. The race is Saturday morning. You got to be ready to go. Check your athlete guide. It's been emailed to you. It's on the website. We do offer packet pickup on Friday. Great. I highly suggest swimmers, if you can pick up your packet on Friday, to do so. If you can get your packet a day in advance, yeah. have everything you need. Go ahead. Get your chip. Get your cap. Get numbered up. Can I pick up a packet for my buddy or no? No. Okay. No. Yeah, so because you know everyone's gonna be thinking, I'll have my buddy pick it up. Yeah. Not cool. Not Can't happen. Cool. Not gonna happen. Come pick you up, your pick own up your own stuff. Pack. All right. Then what I want you to do is I want you to take a walk down to the swim finish in daylight. Look at it. It'll be set, ready to go. Why do you want them to do that? Give you some sense of familiarity. Just visualizing. Visualizing. Okay. This is where I'm going to yep. this is where the that. race finishes all right if you can only make it on saturday i i 100 understand that and we all have lives we're all busy but if you're going to be in town please take a walk down to lincoln boulevard it is a 0.4 mile walk okay. to lincoln boulevard and look at your finish visualize yourself in the water visualize yourself coming through that arch i can't tell you okay. how much this will help you come race morning yeah. Okay, so if you have the opportunity, please take it. Absolutely. Now I understand why. Yeah, you want to see it. Anything you can see that gives you good information when you're in bed the night before, mm -hmm. seeing yourself coming through those arches, it's all going to help you. Yep, instead no of, doubt. Instead of wondering. Yep. No doubt. So race morning, all right? We fast forward. We get to race morning, mm -hmm. Saturday morning. Yeah. Go through your athlete guide. I'll say this again. I'm not going to babysit you on this thing. Parking opens up 4 o'clock in the morning. It's shuttle parking. Please look at your athlete guide to see how this works. Very important. We even did a video about it, Doc, oh. last week where we videoed this is, what, this is where shuttle parking is located, and I show Good it idea. to them in the daylight Good idea. because you're going to be rolling in at O Dark 30 and need to find right. a, a, a vineyard and, and parking in a field. Now, right. we're going to have people there, right. but again, Go back to the videos on the Escape the Cape Facebook page yeah. and look at our parking video. It's in there. It was in last week. Is you're, this where you're bringing up people might want to go from the parking and ride to the swim start, or is that not happening? Well, some of them may do that. So here's the thing. For all of you triathletes out there that are doing the swim yeah. and the triathlon, we do understand some of you are going to be riding your bike into the ferry terminal. That's what I'm wondering. Totally cool. Just remember, the roads are not closed for you early in the morning. You know if it's going to be dark, yeah. you should have lights on your bike. Yeah. You should have your helmet on. Yeah. You should be informed. It's about a mile ride from the vineyard to, um, uh, to, to the to ferry terminal. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to get on that bus. We're going to have, uh, you're going to get on that bus. It's going to drop you right off at the ferry terminal. We'll be there waiting for you with open arms. You're going to receive a tag for your bag. After you check in, do your thing, you're going to put your, your swim stuff in your bag, and you're going to drop it right out front of the gallery on a big, long trailer that we have in the, in the corresponding number. Okay. That bag will meet you at the finish at Lincoln Avenue. Okay. So your bag's swimmers, you will, they will meet you at the finish line, and when you get there, we'll have some baby pools set up for you to wash your feet off. You can put your sneaks on, and everyone's going to walk down Beach Drive, which will be closed to vehicular traffic. Right. And you'll meet us on the lawn for breakfast oh, and awards. Sweet. Yeah. For all of you that are riding your bikes in, we have complimentary bike valet for those triathletes Saturday morning at O Dark 30. Yeah. So that way, once they finish the swim, they can check in for the triathlon. Wow. The check, swim, they have the to swim, come back to the ferry. Correct. And check in there. The swim check-in. Is for the swim only. That's it. You cannot check in for the triathlon yeah, Friday yeah. afternoon or O Dark 30 
Saturday morning. Or leave your bike or do any of that stuff. You can leave your bike in bike valet if you have your bike. We have that set up for right, you. But not in transition, obviously. Correct. Not in Correct. Case, bike valet. So please know that. Okay. If you're a triathlete doing the swim, if you're a triathlete also uh, you're doing the swim and the triathlon, you can ride your bike onto the property at Odark 30. We will have bike valet for you. So they don't need to bring a lock and lock it all up. No. You got people. We've got it for you. Okay. We're here to take care. We're here to make this experience as, as, as good as right. possible. Yeah. So now. The swim is finished. We do. Uh, uh, we will get on the boat by six a.m. We'll do our national anthem. Right. We'll play our theme song. Yep. We'll head out there. Now our swimmers are on the boat. The boat's moving. It's pulling away from the dock. <laughs> there is no turning back at this point. No. We do not allow anyone to use a ladder to get into the water. We do not allow anyone to come in and, and do anything else. There's one way into the water, ladies and gentlemen, right. and that is jumping off the front That's right. of the Cape May Lewis Ferry Terminal. That's awesome. Oh, of the Cape, Cape May Lewis Ferry. Okay, the boat. <laughs> Don't jump off the terminal. Don't jump off the terminal. <laughs> so, Doc, you'll be there. I am there. I'll be there. Yep. We'll have our regular crew that is on the boat, and I, and I do want them to know the people we have on the boat have been on the boat, boat multiple times assisting Absolutely. I could, I could tell you that we've all basically been there all six years practically Yes, and watched thousands now of people jump. Right. And I could tell you, we've seen it all in terms of the people who want us to get out of their way so they can just go fly off the boat, which is great for the people who are more anxious and worried. And we'll talk about that in a second. Yep. And then those of you who are anxious and worried and are also just going to fly off the boat anyway. Oh yeah, we will have both kinds. We got the we got the people who are like, can I please be first? Can I please Absolutely. be first? And they literally go full speed off the boat, you know, having a great time. And yep. then we have others where they're like, I'm ready, and they get to the end and they go, not ready, and then right. they they head back. And we'll do this multiple times. Well, I wanted to address that one actually because of all the things, I guess, that we see <clears throat> that is going to make it harder for you is you can't once you look at the jump, and I'm not suggesting the jump is is any bigger than the 12 feet. But when you look at it, you can't unsee it once you see it. <laughs> and so once you, if you're really squeamish about the swim and you are thinking that looking down at the water, you think it's going to help you, we only see it for these people to make it even harder because they look, they pull back, they yes. look, they pull back. And oftentimes it, all, it really matters because we have maybe a couple hundred people behind you who are waiting to go. Yep. And it really does make it difficult. Not that we don't want you to, you know, go when you're ready to go, so to, so to speak. But I really want you to encourage to trust us at the front. I'm going to be up there, and there's six to eight guys and girls up there who are experienced. If we, if I can get you, or at least some of you, to say, hey, Mitch, am I clear to go? And I can get you just to walk right past me and just jump where I point without you having to look and peek. You're going to not regret it. You're going to say, thank you for doing that to me. Yep. Because we wind up getting a handful of people who are looking, seeing it, get psyched out, and then go back and forth, and it mucks it up. The last thing I'll say about this or for the moment, Steve, is if you're squeamish and really worried about the swim, try, try, try not to be in the back of the boat waiting to go. I know it makes sense because you're avoiding, avoiding it for as long as you can, but then you're going to be back there with other really nervous people. And the energy that gets created in the back of the boat is not the kind of energy you want for this race. So if I can get you to move up, find a buddy. There are people I watch on the boat go, yo, dude, can I just jump at the same time as you? I don't know you. Hey, this is my name. I'm going to go when you go. Just I need someone to, to help me out. You can't hold hands, but you could jump at the same time as people, each in your own area. Look for people to help you out. You are a community of fellow yeah. triathletes. So try to get into the middle of the pack if you're not uh, – comfortable join the herd rather than kind of being the ones in the back because then that energy gets a little bit tough so just a couple pieces of advice absolutely absolutely you couldn't have said it any better um we have seen we've seen a lot on that boat and i think the best thing for people is is just make that commitment get in line and go for it yeah i know that's what's so scary it's like ripping the band-aid off and going but i could also say for those of you who are particularly worried i've watched thousands of people jump the most scared people ever and they get down into the water, and there's the lifeguards. There's like a row of lifeguards on, on, on uh, kayaks and everything else. They immediately turn up to me and give me a thumbs up. Because it's, it's once those five seconds are over, 
it's all it's all fun and games. So yeah. let's talk about that. You're going. You're you're waiting to go. I saw a question. Uh, someone asked, "How do they hold their goggles? Yeah. How do they keep their goggles from from coming off?" Yeah. And so my number one recommendation for you is, um, you know, you're going to need to put your hands over your face at some point to make sure those goggles don't fall off. Now I'm not telling you to do it any specific way. You can decide to jump and cover your face like this. You can decide to jump and make sure they're held on like this. But remember, you only have to do that at the last second. You only have to do that at the last second. We will have photographers out in that water on the boats taking photos of every athlete That's true. as they jump off of the boat. So remember, it's a photo op. That's true. You want the people at the office who said you were insane to see that photo of you jumping off the boat like a boss. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're scared. Just jump off like a boss yeah. and then worry about the rest later. Yeah. So. So if you could hold maybe the side of your goggles, I sometimes tell people to do that and put one arm out, you know, to kind of brace you on. But you're going to pop right back up with your wetsuit anyway. Yeah. So uh, you do have to probably keep one hand on it, like a little bit like yeah. this, or put it under your swim cap, which will also Sure. Help. And the other thing that you will invariably happen, you're probably going to get some water in your goggles. But check this out. Yep. Some of you are probably thinking, I don't want to get jumped on top of. Well, yeah. that's point. our job. That's a good point. Our job is monitoring you in the water. Yeah. You jump off, yeah. you land in the water. Those of you with a wetsuit, you're going to pop up pretty quick. Yeah. Those of you without the wetsuit, you're going to go down a little bit further, yeah. and then you will pop back up. The, the depth is going to be about 14, 15 feet where we're jumping, so everything's safe there. Yep. You may get a little water in your goggles. You simply turn over on your back. You look at us. You give us a thumbs up. We're going to make sure nothing's gonna, no one's going to jump on you, not on our watch. That's for sure. And – there's about a four or five knot current heading south. That means when you hit the water, ladies and gentlemen, you're moving away from the boat. Yeah. So that's actually a really good thing. Yeah. That's a really good thing because, number one, if so you're not true. having your best day, if you're doing a three-mile, we're going to have a PR for you. It's, okay? I, it's so true. <laughs> I was going to actually say that. It's fast and fast and fun, fast in a good way. You're going to be pushed down right where you need to go. The swim goes really fast. And we are there to make sure that nobody gets jumped on. Absolutely. Yeah. So that, that's our job. So you need to trust us. Yeah, that's really the piece. If you come trust. talk to me before, talk to me on the boat. We got like a while on the boat. Come talk to the people at the front. You know, get to know us. Chat us up a little bit. And we'll help you develop a plan. You want to come stand by me? Great. You want to stand by the other guys or girl? Great. Yep. You just And then just don't try to look. Just try to go. Yeah. So that's jumping off the boat for the open water, uh, the open water classic. We will have water safety out there. Um, please know that as we jump off for the three mile, um, our lifeguards will be falling back with you. So they'll be doing the swim with you, and then we will get ourselves in the position for the one mile swim, Doc. Yeah. Okay. Three miles. And that boat will be out of the way of the lane of swimmers, right. where we'll have another group of lifeguards waiting, right. as well as U.S. Coast Guard fire departments, state police, prosecutor's office. we got boats in the water. Okay, yeah. we got boats in the water. Absolutely. Then those athletes will jump off just as instructed prior to. And then as those athletes are swimming in, they will eventually marry into a lane and head towards the finish. There will be an arch on the beach, Tier Swimming. Tier Sport is our official swim course sponsor. You will see a giant red arch on the beach. Your job is to aim for that red arch. You will see it clear as day. The beautiful thing about Cape May County, is spe specifically Lower Township, yeah. land will be on your left, swimmers. Land will be on your left. Right. It'll be open bay to your right. So all you have to do is keep land on your left and keep swimming south with the current. Yeah. We will have buoys out there, but please, this is an open water swim, not a pool swim. Do not expect buoys every eighth of a mile marking 100 meters. We're talking quarter mile and further apart just so you can pop up and see that giant red six-foot tier buoy. You know you're going in the right direction. Yeah. We'll also have our lifeguards that they'll help point you in the they're right awesome. direction. They're awesome. They're yeah. awesome. I mean, so, I've been here every year. Yeah. I mean, really, they're there for you for to help you jump. And then I know they're in the water to help direct you. They're awesome. Yeah, totally. So uh, if you're a right side breather, uh, which I'm a right side breather, believe it or not, even though I'm left-handed, really? I breathe out on my right side. Yeah. There's an opportunity to, hey, you're going to have to breathe out the left a little bit just to make sure you're going parallel, parallel with the shoreline, and that's going to get you home. 
Yeah, it's fast right. and fun. Yeah. Once you finish the swim, ladies and gentlemen, your bag will be waiting for you where your towel is yeah. or your or whatever it, it is there. We'll have a couple of baby pools. You can wash your feet off. That way you can walk down the road mm-hmm. onto the lawn where breakfast is waiting, where awards are also waiting for you. You reminded me really quickly. People sometimes have glasses, sometimes have special things that you need to bring on the boat. There's a table set up. Yeah. You can leave your glasses, your... We'll have Ziploc bags. Yeah, whatever. Not to plug Ziploc, not without being a sponsor, but we'll have Ziploc bags with the little... You can write on them. Yeah. So we'll have you write on them. We'll put them in a larger bag, and then that table will meet you back on the lawn. They think of everything. I'm yeah. serious. That's what makes it great. Yeah, it's because yeah. only I've screwed it up before, so <laughs> well, that's no. why. <laughs> no, but people request it, and now you've got it. So it makes so, our job easier. Absolutely. So um, that's our open water swim. Got it. Now, and triathletes, you want to get into the swim, you want to warm up, you kind of want to have that uh-huh. that experience prior to the triathlon, you can sign up for the open water swim still uh-huh. at 50% off. Oh, You're already cool. signed up for the triathlon, you can do the swim at 50% off. Yeah. Well, let me recommend, obviously, for anyone who yeah, has the race, isn't sure about the race on Sunday, and really you want to get a, you know, get a couple of buddies and sign up and do even the, do the mile swim, whatever it is, yeah. just to get a taste of what it's like. You know, no hurry, no rush. Take your time. What better practice for a Sunday's event than having a nice chill swim on, on Saturday? Great Absolutely. Idea. So that's race morning. And the other thing is, if you do the swim on Saturday morning, you've pretty much eliminated the nerves for Sunday morning. That's what I mean. Yeah. From a mental piece, it's yeah. you know, been the there, done that. Yeah. Let's rock. That's what I mean. I mean, the confidence you can get from just that, because you're not going to have a warm up swim. Obviously, in these races, no. So that's a good point. So no this, warm up that, that could be your your warm up. Um, geez, that's pretty cool. Actually. Yeah. yeah. So here we are, Saturday morning, Lower Township, Cape May Lewis Ferry Terminal in North Cape May. It's time to check in for the triathlon. Got it. It's time to check in for the triathlon. Shuttle parking for check in is located in the exact same spot. It's located at the Cape May uh, Winery vineyard okay it's on shun pike don't show up to the actual winery which is close by you're going to the vineyard the exact address is located in the athlete guide okay ding, 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 ding. we're gonna say that a lot now for all of you triathletes out there for all of you triathletes out there we have what really no one else has i don't know anywhere that uses an app outside of that works that uh, yeah. yeah i don't know so <laughs> On my phone, you can see there's the Delmo Sports app. I touch the app, boom, there's Escape the Cape. It's the only thing you can find. In this app, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing you're going to see is the athlete guide. Everything you need is right there. Yeah. Every, it's quick. It's instant. I implore you to please download the app. Get the athlete guide. Have it ready at your fingertips. You'll also see... Uh, more importantly, you'll see a schedule in there, right there. Yeah. You touch the schedule, schedule comes up, usually faster than this. There it is. So here it is, right? Talking about a plan, Doc. Yeah. Talking about having a schedule. You don't have to go fishing through the internet, looking for things. It's in the app, okay? It's in the app. So, uh, again, you're going through the athlete guide. You're marking things. You have a plan for yourself. You're prepared. Right. This is, you're still on Saturday, right? We're on Saturday now. Okay. They're coming with their families. Everyone's parking at this parking lot. Yep. They're getting shuttled over with their kids and all that. They're registering for the event. They get their numbers and all that. Yep. And they've got their bikes with them now. Correct. So what's going to happen is people are going to show up yeah. to the, to the uh, shuttle parking and they're going to ride their bike in. I highly recommend it. I think it's great. Why not? Put your helmet on and remember, yeah. obey the laws of the road. The beautiful part is that ferry road coming in Lincoln Boulevard has a nice wide shoulder. Yeah. Stay in the shoulder, follow the traffic laws. You're all experienced, and I'm going to think you got common sense. So please do that. When if you I come, don't want to ride my bike in, what do I do? If you don't want to ride your bike in, or is that really what I need to do? Basically, what you need so to do. So I put my family on the shuttle bus and I ride my bike in. That's the plan. Correct. Okay. That's yep. what I want. Correct. Okay. Correct. Or they can drop you off outside the ferry terminal with your bike and you could just ride right in. Okay. Do it. Yeah. But remember, the ferry is an operating business at this point. They have regular customers that they need to tend to, so we don't want to disrupt that or okay. disrupt it as least as we can. Right. So try to stay away from the terminal, yeah. go to the parking lot. Yes. And come in from there. Yes. Got it. So you're going to arrive on site and you're going to check in. Be sure to have your USAT uh, membership card. Um, if you don't have that, if you don't have that, you can get on and you can find it online. 
Okay. As well as our one day members will know who you are. You need to have your photo ID. No ID, no race, no exceptions. I can't stress this enough. If anyone follows what I do on Facebook, I showed up to a race in Florida without my ID and I turned the car around and I was very close to the event. I had to turn around, had to creep back into my parents' house, not wake up anybody at O dark 30, grab my ID and show up to the race. So you're talking, you know, your race director's telling you I've gone home and gotten my ID. You better do the same. So remember no ID, no, no insurance. We'll write that down right now. Really? Yeah. Right. The, that's part of your note taking. Yeah. One of the other things I highly suggest that you do is to go on Google and look up, Checklist, triathlon checklist. There are many of them. I still use mine to this day that I got from USAT, and it goes through all the things that you'll yeah, need. Great idea. Now, I'm not going to go through those things, but I would highly suggest you download a checklist. Right? Talk about checking the boxes, having confidence. Yep. You know, yep. there's no thinking, did I forget it? Right. No, no. You check the boxes, Doc. So, did you have your checklist? Oh, yeah. I had a checklist. You, when you forgot the thing? I had, I had, <laughs> I had the checklist. <laughs> What? I mean, I'm not trying to throw you under the bus, but it's a long story. <laughs> all right, all right, it's all right. a long story. So please, don't have that be, ready to go. You know, like Steve, but don't always be like him. So make no. sure you have your checklist no. and you remember it. Again, the reason why I know is because I've done it wrong every way you can. <laughs> so you're going to get to the ferry terminal. You're going to walk right into the gallery, ladies and gentlemen. There will be a, an arch, a nice big arch saying, welcome triathletes, welcome escape the capers. You'll walk right in and head upstairs to the, at the ferry terminal. It'll be well marked, and it is a beautiful facility. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. when they laid this place out 25, 30 years ago, yeah. they didn't know that they were building it perfectly for a world-class triathlon, and that's what they've done. So right. kudos to the DRBA for allowing us to do this event. It Absolutely. is a gift. Great kudos. Great yeah. Yeah. And so you'll head upstairs. You'll be asked to present your ID. You'll check in. You'll go through our process seamlessly. Everything we do here is paperless at Delmo Sports. It's better for the environment, and it's, a, it's really, really efficient. You'll go in, you'll get your cap, you'll get your chip, you'll get your shirt, you'll get all of those things. Right. Something about the shirts. If for some reason your shirt doesn't quite fit or it's not the, what you expected or something like that, we want you to just take the one that you signed up for. You want a large, you got a large. At the end of the event on Sunday, we'll have a shirt exchange. Okay. You could just go over, bring your shirt in exchange for one that might fit you a little bit better. So okay. I know that's always a point of contention with a lot of oh. with a lot of athletes. Yeah. And sizing today is a right. large in one brand that's is true. not a large in another brand. And I just want you to know we know this. Okay. We're aware of this. Okay. So you go, you'll check in. All right, you'll check in, and then what you'll do is stick her up your bike outside. Yeah, do that right away. Yep. Yep. Put your bracelet on, your wrist. Yep. And then you're going to meet our crew over transition. You're going to rack your bike mm -hmm. in your designated spot. New this year at Escape the Cape, we used to do group racking. So it would be this rack is from 1 to 84. Yeah. It's now, no, no, this is number one, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. Oh, yeah, yeah a specific so spot. You have yeah. a specific spot in transition, okay. every athlete. Okay. Right. Of course, there is number one is reserved. As well, it should be. And you'll find out more later. So, yeah, so you'll go to your spot. Very easy to find. So it's not like, oh, I got to get there and get the best corner spot. No, you're going to get the spot where your number is. Fair for everybody. Fair for everybody. If you have any questions, right, our staff is there ready to help you. So that's another big thing. That's okay. another big if thing. If I'm bringing my kid or my husband, my wife, my partner, they want to volunteer, is there going to be something set up right outside the terminal for them? 100%. Right outside the terminal, there's an information and volunteer booth. Okay. And I got to tell you, when you volunteer, you're pretty much given an all-access pass. Yeah. So if you're going to be there watching, and I learned this from Maria Simone, if you're out there listening at No Limits Endurance, um, she volunteers for everything because then she can go wherever she wants to go. <laughs> she doesn't have to. She's VIP. She's VIP. <laughs> so get involved, volunteer, and have an all-access pass. Absolutely. I'll work you to the bone, though, believe me. Yep. So No, and it's great. You need them out there. So as many volunteers as possible. Exactly. So also, um, we have two mandatory meetings. That doesn't mean you go to both. Right. What we would like you to do is please attend one. Yeah. Please attend one of these meetings. Don't go to both. Don't go to <laughs> Dr. Mitch will be there on the lawn yep, all, day. all day long. Yep. And I will tell you that he will be busy all day long. Happy to be. Happy to be. Really. And we appreciate come find, it. Come find me. I have the studliest triathletes come in and find me because they're nervous. I have people who are first-timers find me. It doesn't matter who you are, how fast you, how fast you go. 
if you've got a question, don't be afraid to come talk to me about it. Um, yeah. Or if I, if I see you looking particularly worried, I may come over to you and ask you if everything's cool. Yeah. So let's have some fun, but don't hesitate to come ask me. That's, why I'm, that's why I'm there. That's my yeah, I'll probably get my own like 15 minute private session somewhere in the middle of the, <laughs> the day. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. I'll be busy. So, <laughs> so um, you're going to be on the lawn. We have plenty of vendors. We have some tremendous sponsors in Spirit Health Network that has yeah, taken that. care of the oh, knee. That, oh, yeah. I just did that. That was so much. Yeah. <laughs> so, and Spirit Health Network, tier, uh, tier swimming. Try, uh, tr uh, try everything um, is going to be on site. Anything that you need, you need a wetsuit, you need gear, whatever it is, try everything. Food has everything. And goose and stuff, yeah. We'll have Solomon running. We'll have Cane and Shades. We'll have Normatech recovery stations. Mm -hmm. Base Nutrition, our official nutrition partner, they'll be there. And a whole host of other people. So please come, Kate May Running Company, come visit, talk with everyone. This yep. is such an amazing opportunity. Yep. The thing about triathlon is it brings out the best version of me. Yeah. Like for that one day, yeah. I'm in a certain mindset, and mm -hmm. it's like, you know what? Everybody's approachable. People want to be there. It's that environment, that energy that it doesn't exactly. exist anywhere else. Exactly. You know? Exactly. It, it, no, the triathlon community, all of you out there who've done it before, no, that's what keeps you in some ways coming back for mm -hmm. more, just being around all these inspired people. So hang out on Saturday. Not too long. You know, especially if it's super hot, yep. you know, you don't, don't be a hero and just spend all your day out there socializing, but make sure you hang out and say hello to people and take advantage of it and get to know people. Definitely. I mean, again, it's an addictive sport. You're going to see other people who are just like you. So don't hang out by yourself. Make sure you try to be social and hang and, you know, get to know people. So someone is asking what the water temp is. And right now it's in the upper sixties. It fluctuated anywhere from 72 down to 65. So the water has been pretty warm. Uh, uh, this last week, and that's what we expect it to be next week. So, again, uh, it's not too warm for a wetsuit, but it is definitely on the warmer side. It's definitely on the warmer side. I've, I've done swims in 49 degrees. It's not 49 degree water. It's not fun. This is really it's a pleasurable experience in terms of water temperature and, and conditions. Okay, great. And conditions. So, please attend the athlete meeting. Please make sure if you have a question that you ask questions and seek out other triathletes because triathletes want to help others. The best triathlete in the world today at one point was a newbie who knew nothing about the sport. Right. And the only way we can you, you get to that next level, you know, and that next level may be just a person that really doesn't have too many more questions is you got to ask questions. OK, everyone, I will tell you this at a demo event. What we pride ourselves on is the energy level. Nice people. They want to help you. That's you know, sure. and again, we're going to have over 300 triathletes that have never done this. Absolutely. Now, what about the triathletes that have done this the last five years? They got that big, huge honker of a medal last year. Yeah. We have some changes this year. What's going on? So our swim finish. As you know, yeah. we changed our swim finish that was traditionally at the West End Jetty. Yeah. We moved it up the beach a half a mile. Right. The reason being is we want this to be the safest, right. best event we can possibly make it. And therefore, we moved the swim finish up to Lincoln Boulevard. Now, Lincoln Boulevard is where all the uh, cyclists will make the left-hand turn. It's where all the runners head onto the beach. So it's a high-traffic area. But we believe that it is the right thing to do for the swimmers. The Coast Guard agrees. The beach patrols agree. And I, what I ultimately believe is um, you'll agree uh, that there is much more room for much more margin of error in your navigation. If you didn't navigate correctly and you missed the West End jetty, eh, you're kind of going around the jetty and we don't want that to happen. No. No. Now at Lincoln Boulevard, you got nothing to worry about. That's great. You got nothing to worry about. So what I, what I would told the open water swimmers to do is when you come on Saturday, absolutely walk up beach drive, take a look at your swim finish. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the best possible thing you can do. And mm -hmm. while you're at the swim finish, well, something else you'll notice, all of Beach Drive has been completely and totally repaved. Oh, right. Brand new road with sidewalks. So now there's more room for spectators to watch. You know, not to get morose, but it reminds me of Jason Kildary when you talk about walking to the water and seeing it. Just a quick shout out, right, to ETA coach my Jason. My man. Who every Saturday, every, every year I've been here, he's been here with Steve doing a little swim clinic. And so, uh, you know, say a little prayer uh, when you're there in honor of, of Jason who uh, lost his life way too soon, yep. but would be happy to know that you guys are getting your butts in the water yeah. and going for it and having a good, 
So having a good weekend. Taking the place of that uh, swim that Jason would host every year, we have uh, the Cape May, uh, Cape May Running Company, Mike Mader and Harry Back, two very experienced triathletes. They will be leading right. a swim right. uh, on that Saturday out in the water. That's I right. highly suggest that you do get in the water. Absolutely, everybody. In fact, if you're a nervous swimmer, get in the water. It doesn't matter if you swim 20 strokes or you swim a half a mile or further. Just get wet. Please, get yeah. in the water. Get wet, and uh, what you'll notice is the Delaware Bay looks placid. Right. That water's ripping, and it is it is ripping either north or south. For us, it'll be ripping south, and you'll have a current pushing you to the finish line. So just, just be aware of that. So we have newly paved roads right. out in, in Lower Township. Thank you, Mayor Eric Simonson, who is also a, an Escape the Cape multiple escape the Cape finisher last year he came across the finish line with his phone I disqualified him oh for the mayor <laughs> really <laughs> taking a picture of himself yeah. but he's a great guy and I got to tell you I am so grateful for the for lower township the community all those people that live on Beach Drive we close the road down for an entire morning they are supportive some of them are even volunteering and standing on the corner cool. I highly suggest every volunteer you see and I've said this for multiple races. You have. Yep. Say thank you. Absolutely. It will take your mind off of uh, anything that may be going on in your head during that event. And speaking of, yep. all right, we already went through jumping off of the boat about the open water classic. Yep. Uh, a lot of our experienced a athletes and, and any of you experienced triathletes that will be on that boat, what we would like you to do is if you see an athlete that looks nervous, please go up to them. Yeah. Be amazing. Please go up to them and, and, and offer any assistance and say, hey, you doing okay? I'm, I've done this before. Let me, maybe I can help you out. Absolutely. That one comment could completely flip the switch in that person's head, and they're thinking, I'm going to be all right. Absolutely. You give them some strategy that you use that's helped you out that they would never thought of. You yep. know, you got a little trick that you use. That can make all the difference in terms of how the day goes, as you so, said. Oh, and one other thing that we're doing differently this year is because our swim finish, Doc, is at Lincoln Boulevard yep. and the beach. It is actually 0.1 miles further of a run than our old swim finish to transition, our old T1. It's, point, it's, point one, it's a tenth of a mile further, but much of this run is on concrete. Now, two things you can do. One, you could just barefoot it and take the paint. Run on the pavement, barefoot on the street, and work your way into transition. Or two. Something I recommend for those of you that are like, yeah, that's great, Steve. I don't think so. We've developed a sneaker transition at Lincoln Boulevard. So what I'd like you to do is to take an old pair of sneakers that you have. Yeah. The ones you don't really care yeah. about. You just want to make sure they get you from point A to point B yeah. without stubbing your toe. Yeah. You take your sneakers, right, and you just simply place them in sneaker transition. They do this at Alcatraz. That's mm -hmm. where I learned of it when yeah. I did Alcatraz. Yep. You could have your sneakers sitting there waiting for you at the swim finish. Shameless plug for Salmi. Nice work. Or you could say no. I said no and ran with numb feet a half a mile to transition. How far did you say this transition? It's 0. 0.4. 0. 0.4. 0. 0.4. So okay. it's very little soft sand when you get out of the water at this new location okay. and a lot more road. So technically, the road kind of goes downhill a little bit. It's going down. So as long as you got your sneakers on, yeah, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Yeah. And some of you, listen, some of you are going to walk that distance. That's, That's true. okay. Some will jog. Right. What I ask is no matter what the person in front of you is doing, that you as an athlete be courteous. And if you are someone, you know, it's not every point. not every person is the is a uh, is the best runner. Some of our very fast swimmers will walk that entire way. Yeah. Right. Just be courteous, man. right? And if be you're nice. new and this, you know, you get out of the water, your your heart rate won't be higher probably throughout the day than it will be when you get out of the swim, yeah. right? Generally speaking, so take your time. Take, take your, your time. time. Take your time doing it. Um, move to the right. Let the fast people kind of run by you. Yep. But um, catch your breath. Get your wetsuit off. And we'll have an aid. We'll have aid set up as they're entering transition just before they enter the ferry property. So there won't be ferry at the – there won't be an aid station at where they exit the water. Okay. They have to get down the road, and right before they get onto the ferry property, that's where an aid station will be located for them. Where will they find, like, their glasses that they left on the boat and all that? Will it be right there at the aid station? Yeah, we'll, 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 figure that we'll out. ultimately take that back because, remember, our boat doesn't get in for a while. 
So right. if this is something, oh, if you right. need your glasses yeah, yeah, to right. navigate the bike, then you should have a pair of glasses right. at the bike. Good point. But it takes you, us a while to get back in, so don't count on whatever. But I mean, you if you got so. Coke bottles just to see, <laughs> you know, to get on the boat, well, that's that's one thing. But remember, you need to have a plan for that. Yeah. So that that'd be a plan. Don't count on us getting back in time to deliver your glasses or your inhaler or whatever else you might yeah, need. Usually people with an inhaler have multiple inhalers. Yeah. yeah. So take it with you on the boat. Yeah. Then you could say, hey, here you go. Here's my here's my inhaler. You put your race number on it. We're going to bring it back to transition where then you can access it once we get back. Right? Because we got to wait for everybody which to get off the boat. Yep. Okay. Which takes a while. Yeah. So um, we have sneaker transition set up. Again, I'm going to recommend that you take advantage of it. And there's no rhyme or reason to it. It'll be a section and you place your sneakers where you know they'll be. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. We're not going to, you're not going to tag them. You're not going to do anything. You know what your gross sneakers look like. Put them there. Maybe it's a pair of flip flops. Maybe it's nothing. Okay. Maybe it's not, it's up to you. So sneaker transition, Lincoln Boulevard, sneaker transition. Um, okay. And also uh, our bike course is identical to last year, doc. Okay. We have a lot of newly freshly paved roads in lower townships. So we're, about yeah, that. we're yeah. grateful for that. Yep. Once athletes will navigate that, and I'll go through that more at the on-site meetings and it's in the athlete guide, right. you'll return to transition. What I do suggest is that when you do are coming in and out of the ferry terminal, use that. Use that as a recovery. Yeah. Okay? These are no passing zones. When you're in the ferry terminal property and you're on your bike, that's where you can unhook the shoes, get lower the heart rate, get ready for the next phase, which will be the run. Yep. You know, which will be the run. Yep. Dismount safely. Yep. For all of you aqua bikers out there, and we have quite a few, I think we have close to 100 aqua bikers, which we're totally fired up about, by that's the way. Right. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. And I almost, how many bike. did you say? How many? Almost 100. 100. Yeah, almost 100. Um, we have an aqua bike finish arch. An aqua wow. bike finish arch uh, in transition. So you're going to get right to that arch once you hit it. Huh. Your time is done, and you'll receive your medal there. Right. You'll receive your medal there. So we have that all mapped out for you. And relay people, will uh, you'll get there. will get instructions on the day of, of course, but yes. they'll be waiting in transition. Yeah. Relay way. people wait in transition to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to uh, take the chip from, from their partner, and then they go out and do their, their yeah. section. For the run, ladies and gentlemen, there is no secret on the run of Escape the Cape. This is a suffer fest. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry about the swim. Think about the run. Yeah. Swim, <laughs> fun, bike, scenic, <laughs> run, suffer fest. All right. These newly paved roads are a fresh black color and should absorb maximum <laughs> amount of heat with zero shade. <laughs> you, you pay for this, by the way? You pay for this. Stuff. It's what makes it great. It is. It's no, what makes it, it great. Is. It makes when you cross that finish line. All the sweeter. There are, if you're doing the 5K, there are three beach sections. One, the first beach section is Lincoln Boulevard to Rose Hill Dune. Okay. And everybody has to do it. The second beach section is when you get to Racetrack Road. Those five carriers will make a left, run down the dune, run up, uh, south the block, run back up the dune, and head back onto the course. You'll then return the way you came via the Lincoln Boulevard Rose Hill Dune. So that's three beach sections for for the five k. The five yeah. mile, five beach sections. Okay. So you'll do the Rose Hill Dune. You'll do the Racetrack Dune. You'll do the Pinewood Mallow Dune. Okay. You'll do all of those twice. Okay. So I guess that yeah, you'll do you'll do the uh, the um, you'll do the Rose Hill Dune twice. That's out and back. You'll do the Pinewood Mallow Dune twice, and you'll hit that racetrack Adelphia dune one time it's a lot of sand running if you had to give one key to sand running you've done it more than i have what would it be pace yourself besides that don't push it on the sand yeah use the sand as a recovery it's kind of like swimming you could put a hundred percent more effort into your swimming and trying to go faster and you're really not going that much faster so no, take your time on the sand doc if yeah. you're going to do this event yeah and use it as a recovery for when you get back up onto pavement onto That's... firm footing because hey look you don't want to kind of pull something or tweak something yeah no one's going fast on the sand you're not going to make up the ground that you think <laughs> right right everyone's lost exactly okay we have plenty of aid out there so we, you have uh one two three four five opportunities for the five milers Three opportunities for the five Kers. Okay. 
we have ice cold sponges, we have base nutrition, right? Base, the official nutrition sponsor of Delmo course on uh, Delmo Sports on course nutrition. Um, we utilize filtered water out on the course, so we reduce waste. There's not a bunch of plastic floating all over the place, so we're, we're really excited about that. And I'm going to come find you on the sand to give you as much encouragement as I can. And along those lines, you talk to the athletes who are running next to you, with you, by you. Give them love, and they will give you love back. That is the best way to deal with some of that frustration. You know, as Des Linden, if you watch the Boston Marathon, you know, it was an amazing story of her giving Shalane Flanagan a little bit of encouragement, saying, I think I'm about to drop out. And she talks about how just giving that to Shalane gave her some sort of inspiration that maybe she had something more in her legs than she thought. Yeah. Now, she went on to win the Boston Marathon. But the point is, if you can give love to someone, they'll give it back, give energy to someone, you'll get that back. Don't be running on that sand. Just I know you're going to go into your pain cave, and you're going to go there for a while. But if someone comes near you, buy you, make sure you try to give them some encouragement. I agree. I, I, I've done a, a, a lot of racing uh, in my time, and I will say, at any opportunity, when I start to feel bad and I have those self-doubts, and for you newbies out there, it's going to happen. You're, you're, there's going to be a part inevitably in this event where you go, what the hell am I doing here? Why, why have I gotten myself into this? I, I literally do it in every race I do. There's some point that I'm like, why am I here? I could be eating donuts at home with my kids right now. That's right. That is a point for you to check yourself and say, I'm here because I'm able to be here. I'm grateful to be here. And find the first person you can, smile at them, wish them good luck, thank a volunteer, whatever it is. Because I am telling you, I'm telling you, it will go a long way. Yeah, and that's important to remember that the idea that you might at some point want to quit is actually more normal than you realize. You know, your legs will keep chug chugging and you'll keep going and you'll be wondering why you're doing all this. So don't be, you're not a coward if you have those kinds of thoughts. I mean, he's a little wimpy, but you yourself are not so cowardly or, you know, don't be ashamed of having those kinds of ideas. When you get out of your comfort zone, your mind wants to quit though before your body needs to, right? Because oh, you kept no going doubt. and you finished. Your mind is kind of goes into protection mode. It sort of shuts down. It wants to kind of say this isn't worth it, right? Right. So just anticipate that that's going to happen and have a plan, whether it's kind of having a little laugh at your mind, whether it's thanking somebody. Well, you know, anything that Steve suggested to you just to get you out of your head. But don't be spooked by that thought. When you get out of your comfort zone, your mind's going to want to do something to yeah. you that you don't like. And it, again, it's totally normal to doubt, to have those doubts and question yourself while you're on that bike, maybe going up the West Cape May Bridge, like this is hard, but it's actually quite beautiful. But it, it's inevitably, inevitably going to happen at some point on that run or, or maybe the swim. So a couple things you need to know. During the swim, as long as you're floating, you're moving closer to the finish line. That I guarantee you, okay? So you don't have to have any anxiety. Am I ever going to get there? You're going to get there, okay? Ease up. On the bike, most people have been riding their bikes since they've been a little kid. If it hurts, and it, it, it just ease up on the pedals. Take a look around. The community is absolutely fantastic. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Absolutely. And on the run, you don't have to keep running. Slow down and walk. Take a deep breath. I guarantee you someone's going to run by and say, hey, you got this. Keep going. That's right. Good job. People are going to clap for you. And remember, it's a gift. Yeah. Absolutely. This is all gift. That's right. We don't have to do this. We're able to do it. And we do it because it makes us feel good. And at the end of the day, we're testing ourselves. Yeah. And at the end of the day, nobody cares about your time other than you. No. So, so no. you finish fast. You finish slow. You just try to finish. That's it. Yeah. That's it. So you'll be out there. We'll be out there. Thank your volunteers. You'll head back to uh, the, the finish for Escape the Cape is identical to the last couple of years where you run down Beach Drive. And you, and you, and you, yeah, and mm -hmm. you had, you head onto the property. We have a brand new huge stage that's going on the lawn. So that'll be a little bit different. The fairies bring in their stage for concerts. It's going to be on there. It's going to be all branded up. It's going to be great. Right. Uh, we'll have plenty of room for tri clubs. Uh, there is of course, Mrs. Delmo's famous bomber breakfast, uh, nice. after for all, all athletes and for anyone else, you know, family or friends, there's plenty of food at the ferry terminal. Uh, they have plenty of food there, plenty Beer. of beverages. No. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll have uh, Athletic Brewing Company is our, our official non-alcoholic brew. So there'll be that available for those of you that, hey, you like a post-race you like a post-race beer, but you don't need all that that comes with it. They will be there in addition to a full-service bar with food and restaurant at the On the Rocks Bar and Grill. 
at the at the Cape May Lewis Ferry Terminal. There is an after party that's uh-huh. taking place at Harpoons on the Bay, and you'll see it because you ride your bike past it as well as run past <laughs> it. They're serving bloodies and having a good time over there. Awesome. All triathletes are encouraged uh, to show up, and if you are of age, you will be gi- you will be uh, given a, a complimentary post race beverage courtesy of the Cape May Brewing Company, right? right? And Delmo Sports. So there's the Escape the Cape IPA that they have awesome. uh, on site. And believe it or not, this is a place where all the community goes after after the event, including the police. So it is a great mingling oh, spot. So great on, on the water. It's the only bar restaurant on the west coast of New Jersey. Uh, we will start those awards promptly, uh, promptly around 10, 10 30, which, uh, out on the lawn. Out on the lawn, and our job is really to move it along nicely so that you have the best possible experience. Our shuttles will run until 1 p.m. Doc, so and no one has to worry about. Oh, am I going to miss it? No, no, we've got yeah. you covered. We've oh, got you God. covered. I'm psyched. Yeah, and for any of you that are looking, uh, you're going to be registering for the event next year. If you stay and hang out, you might as well stay hang out and help us break down and get twenty five dollars off. Next year's registration. $25 off if they hang out after the race and help you break down the yep. transition area. Yeah, I got work gloves for you. It's going to be amazing. Terrific. So, so that, that'll be our experience. When you get home, in, uh, invariably, within 24 hours, we're going to have your free complimentary event, uh, event photos uh, that will be sent to you via email. That's right. We'll have a survey we'd like you to, to fill out, and we want you to be brutally honest. You know, we're always trying to push ourselves to make ourselves better. I've never gone into Escape the Cape, like, totally lackadaisical. There's always this feeling of, I got to get better. I, I got to do things better. I see it. You know I what I mean? And, and hopefully you're doing that, too. So um, that's, that's going to be our weekend, Doc. And we have our thing scripted out. Uh, it's like 100 pages long for Delmo Sports. Uh, hopefully you have your weekend scripted out. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'll be there, you know, to help you. If you have questions even beforehand, you can find me on my website, greenpsych.com. You can find my name on the Delmo website as well. Um, there's no, again, no question too small. I see people even on this Facebook Live asking each other questions mm-hmm. or helping each other out. That's the spirit of, of what Steve's trying to create here. Um, no, I think the last thing that I know you wanted me to mention a little bit is about confidence, which is, um, you know, when you take something like this race, which may be out of your comfort zone, it's, it's hard to feel confident. And, you know, if you're feeling confident, great. You should have confidence in your training. You know, you should have confidence in the work that you've done. But if you're having doubts on race day, don't get spooked. Don't get spooked by them. That's part of the competition picture. And Steve knows I like to talk about courage over confidence. To tackle a race like this, to jump, to run on sand, it's really more about being courageous. Yeah. Think about people in your life that have done things that you never thought you could do. Think about, I know it sounds a little funny, but I think about Rosa Parks, people who you know, they weren't confident and they did amazing things. She said no on the bus. She said, no, I'm going to sit here. You people who climb Mount Everest, you know, they're not confident. They take on challenges that are bigger than them, and it takes an unbelievable amount of courage. Yes. You cannot be courageous except in the presence of fear. Fear is always precedes courageous action. So Delmo's races, Escape the Cape is this opportunity for you to be courageous. Instead of worrying about, you know, how confident I am, this is an opportunity for you to be big and courageous, which means you'll be a little spooked and a little bit scared. But you're going to focus on your sport. You're going to focus on your technique. You're going to thank people. You're going to welcome people. You're going to get encouragement from other people. And that's what's going to get you to the finish line. That's There's the goal. No question. That's the goal. That's how Delmo Sports has gone from just one event 15 years ago, one event in 15 cones, to what we do now. Because yeah. I would take something and it would scare the hell out of me. I went from producing Try the Wildwoods, which was just a one-off event every year. In my hometown, real safe. To then, oh my gosh, I'm going to shut down the Atlantic City Expressway or lanes of the Expressway for a bike course. That was terrifying. But somehow I knew if I'm going to get any better, that's right. I- I've got to do this. And the same goes for Escape the Cape when they said, yes, we'll allow you to have people jump off the boat. I never thought they were going to let me do it. <laughs> then they said, and it scared the hell out of me, Doc. Yeah, and I right. said, but you know what? Because you had done Alcatraz, and that scared the hell out of you. Yeah. And you didn't want to have the same experience. No. And, and I knew, yeah. okay, this is a good thing. I got to overcome this fear. And now I'm, you know, I've, I've, I've achieved confidence through being courageous with just right. producing those right. events. That comes afterwards. Absolutely. <laughs> but if up. you don't feel that right. fear, right. you're not going to grow. Yeah. If you don't feel the fear, you're not going to grow. You've got to feel that fear and do it anyway. I'm telling you, if Steve told you on race day that the jump is actually two feet, they changed it. 
you guys, some of you immediately be have, oh, that's great. But by the time you got in, you'd be like, damn, damn, I missed out on something. You would be upset, I promise you. So while you might be scared of it, you might be worried about it, it's exactly what you need to do to find out something about yourself. Yeah. And that's what this is about. So it's perfectly normal. Embrace it. Love it. Know that that's what makes you alive. That's what makes you different. That's right. Appreciate it. Be grateful. Make sure whatever you do, you got a family. Get your, get your affairs in order in terms of get your work done. Get those responsibilities with your family done. Make sure you're not leaving things to the last minute race weekend sure. and building up stress. So, again, when I say get, get your act together, and get ready for race day, okay? Do Absolutely. The work. Start tonight. Start tonight. Yep. A little bit every night, for yep. sure. Well, there you have it. Um, Steve Dalmani, Delmo Sports. Dr. Mitchell Green from Green Psych. Uh, Green, Psych. Green Psych Sports Psychology, <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, we're here. This is the sixth annual Escape the Cape Triathlon and Open Water Classic presented by Inspira Health Network. We will see you on the boat. Six years. Six years. Can you believe it's it? a miss. You know, there's a lot of grain <laughs> here. Oh, please. So I'm backing up. There you go. <laughs> Steve Almani, Mitchell Green, Demo Sports. Over and out. See you soon. If you end this live video now, you'll be able to choose if you want to save or delete it. And now.